Ten years ago, I was part of a Sunday morning worship experience when the Northside family gave their offerings and their commitments for the Time to Build project. Uh, this day was a culmination in our church family uh, that really resulted in a greater passion to reach the lost, a greater resolve to serve in ministry, a greater awareness of the Spirit's work, and a greater dependence on God. Over the next 10 years, 504 people were baptized. 605 people placed membership. The average attendance in our church grew from 560 to 1,200 people because there were faith-filled people that were committed to make room for more. You know, of the first 52 people that I talked to about this project, 35 of them were not here 10 years ago. It means it worked. You know, since the majority of people uh, come to church on a Sunday morning, that really is the open door for them to come to know the church, but also to come to know Jesus. And our church here at Northside stands at a pivotal moment in the history of our church where we can reach more if we would create the space and the place to connect people to Christ and to one another. We really do believe that now is the time to do something. And over the next few minutes, you're gonna to get to hear uh, some of our fellow Northsiders give their perspective as to why now is the time to act. Hi, my name is Brenda Presco, and I'm the Early Childhood Director here at Northside Christian Church. One of my jobs is to oversee childcare on Sunday mornings from ages zero to three and a half. We look forward to loving on your kids and providing a biblical learning experience every Sunday morning. One of the biggest needs we have right now is space. We currently promote two times a year in our little ones down to Critterland. That's our three-year-old department. This year in particular, we had to create special promotions just to provide enough space for our three-year-olds. Another experience that we've had is we had a, a visiting family come to our toddler department and they were uncomfortable leaving their child because there were 15 toddlers in the room with four volunteers. We know that new families come to Northside because of our awesome youth and children's programming. We don't want space to be the barrier that keeps those families from connecting to Northside. Uh, my family's been here about four years and we love Northside because we're, we love being connected with a body of fellow believers. Um, it's like a family here, but also a family, greater, a greater family in our community. And so we just love being connected and being able to serve um, and just are thankful that God brought us here. Well, I serve with the first through sixth grade students as the Big God Storyteller on Sunday mornings. Um, we have a lot of kids downstairs together and it's a great time to get to worship together and get to share uh, the greatest story ever told together. Um, but space is an issue. When you've got first graders all the way through sixth graders in the same room experience the same worship songs and the same story, it's, it's very hard to meet the needs of all of those different learners and those different students. Well, as a dad with four kids, one in each of the areas um, of the children's ministry from nursery to Critterland to Inside Kids to Crave. Um, I see it whenever we have visitors come, when we invite other, other friends to come to church with us that a lot of times the kids feel like they're swimming upstream, getting through the commons area and then coming downstairs. Um, they don't know which, which stairway to go down because they're, they're like salmon trying to go, go upstream or, or fight the crowd. Um, when they go into Inside Kids, we want that to be an intimate worship experience for them, but it's hard when you have that many kids together and that range of kids together. And when I think about the Generous Project, a number comes to mind and that's 252. We have 252 Sundays to share the story of our Savior when a student is between first grade and sixth grade. And when you think about vacation days, sick days, holidays, um, visitors coming in and out, that time that we have to share with students is a precious and scarce commodity. And so when I think about the Generous Project, I think about how we can provide 
the appropriate spaces to minister to students in the best way possible, where we, want, we don't have a first and a sixth grade student together that we can target in and really build relationships um, with students and really provide worship experiences that are appropriate for each of them. I see investing in the Generous Project as raising up our youth so that we are building the church from within while also providing opportunities to reach outside of the church um, to reach those in need of a savior. Uh, I know that when I pick our kids up after the 1015 service, during that transition window, I will go down to Critterland and get our four-year-old. And when I get to the top of the stairs with him and we start to make our way across the foyer, it can be uh, a little bit of a problem if he sees somebody he knows, uh, lawnmower man Mark or Joe, Alan, whoever it may be, and he sees them, he, he wants to run over and say hi. And so I may lose him in the crowd of people uh, in the entryway as they're going back and forth to the door and the worship center over to get coffee. There's just not a lot of breathing room there for us to make our way across to the nursery where we pick up our two-year-old. Um, it can be a little bit treacherous trying to go across the flow. So we've seen um, just in the youth center, Sunday mornings, it can get pretty packed and students are helping friends find chairs, adding chairs, adding rows uh, toward the end of services as it packs in there and the rows get closer and closer to the back doors. Uh, we've just seen the need for space in the youth area very intimately, we've known that. My name's Robin Jones and my husband Scott and I have gone to Northside for um, 10 years and I serve over at Crave and in the life groups. Um, so I work with the youth um, and the teens. Um, I've served at Crave for the last six years and um, three years at life groups. Space issues that I've seen in Crave um, really involve the, uh, the nature of being able to work with students um, in a smaller group. Um, the last few weeks that I was in Crave, um, we just had to pull out chairs. Uh, actually, that's been, it's been the case for quite a while. We try to set up a certain number of chairs to make it um, feel homey, to make it feel uh, just the way that you would want church to feel when you walk in, especially for newcomers. And lately, it's just this um, scramble to add more, add more, add more, and um, it's pretty much been standing room only uh, the last few weeks for sure that I was in Crave. The other part that, that I really see a need for is when we break off into our small um, prayer um, groups. When we break off into those groups, we have a time where we kind of get to know each other, and then um, the students are given some time to give us um, prayer requests and uh, lift up their prayer needs together. And the space issues come into play when you are literally on top <laughs> of each other's groups. There's not a lot of movement, and then there's also not that feel of privacy. Um, there's this feel that there's a, a whole lot of other students listening in or being able to kind of share in that, that it makes it more difficult to build those um, relationships that are, are truly bonding relationships. And so we definitely have a space limitation uh, for our students, but I notice it uh, also across the street in our main worship area. I know that our nine o'clock service has hit 70% full, I think around six times, and our 1015 service has hit 70% full also, and we know that at 70% full, it feels full. Uh, it's hard for a family of four or a family of five to find seats together and they walk in and as people are standing and worshiping in the back, they're looking for seats and our ushers are scrambling around trying to help them find seats uh, because it looks full and it feels full. One of the limitations of our current building is a small lobby and a lot of people in the small lobby and that can be very difficult. Uh, recently, in my own family, a comment was made that our lobby made them feel claustrophobic. And I would agree with them, and I find it difficult also. And I know that that is not what we want to make our members and future people coming to our church to feel when they enter our lobby. Another challenge that Northside is really having to work through is the lack of margin both in our services and between our services. Uh, since we're committed to three services and, do, and making those available for the whole family, uh, we're really squeezing a lot into a short amount of time. Therefore, our services are one hour in length. There's really a lot more we'd like to do that we're limited to do. Uh, the 15 minutes between services 
does create congestion in our lobby and in our parking lot and, and at decision point. And those are some of the things that we believe we can fix through the Generous Project. But you know, the reason we really want to do the Generous Project is not just because of the need, it's also because of our vision. The Generous Project gives us the opportunity to create the space and the place to connect more people to Christ and to one another. This is not about buildings. This really is about positioning Northside to reach more for Christ. To do nothing is to assume that someone else will reach those that God has, has given us to reach. And I think that's a bad assumption. To do nothing would be to plateau. It would be to stagnate and it would be to put a ceiling on those who we're gonna reach, not just locally, but even globally. You know, since we relocated, our global outreach budget increased from $68,000 to over $218,000. We, we have been able to build churches in Kenya. Uh, we've been able to package over 100,000 meals and send them to Haiti. Uh, we have sent people all around the world, uh, growing their heart for global outreach and supporting our workers there. God has been doing some amazing things. And the Generous Project gives us an opportunity to move forward in the future to have an impact both here and around the world. And so now is the time to act. You know, one of my favorite scriptures comes from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, 18 through 19, where Isaiah says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it?